There are four things. One, two, three, four. Under binomial theorem that you already know how to do skills, okay? So they all flow from this simple idea. They all flow from this simple idea. Firstly, what's a binomial? What is a binomial? Two numbers. Yeah, it's two, well, terms, yeah? So when you look at something like this, A plus B, and then you raise it to some kind of power, right? We call this a binomial expansion, right? So we explored this idea and we said, okay, if we introduce some new notation, factorials, NCRs, this kind of thing, um, M or this, right? Once you use these new kinds of ways to describe things and represent what's going on, you can explain, you can articulate what each of the coefficients in that expansion is going to be, okay? And we, we came up with the binomial theorem, that the rth, as in rth, the rth coefficient in something raised to the power of n is equal to, now, does anyone remember in factorial notation what it is? It's a fraction. Oh, does anyone remember? Oh, yeah? N what? Factorial. N factorial is what I meant to say. Yeah, over? R factorial. N factorial. Very good, okay. Sorry, that's, a, that's an N. Okay, there we go. Okay. So this is the binomial theorem after which this topic is named. Okay. So we said, okay, this is what binomials are. We explored Pascal's triangle and we got that relationship out of there. And then from this one idea, we developed four skills. Okay. So the simplest one simply is um, expanding. Right? So if you have some a plus b to the power of n, whatever n you like, you can expand that thing. And the, very, the simplest question that can be asked is, here's a binomial extension, can you just tell me what all of the terms are going to be? Okay. So we could expand. Someone want to give me a suggestion? What's something else you learned how to do? Okay, so you could find, uh, I'm going to put this on the third one. You could find the coefficient of a specific term. So it's like, if you only want this coefficient, um, like usually we specify that by a power. So for example, give me the coefficient of the, the term which has an a cubed in it, in this thing, okay? Then we can use this to go straight there. And you don't need to evaluate all the rest of it. You don't have to write out the whole thing. You can just use this theorem and go immediately to a direct term, okay? Before that, before that, we had this thing called the general term. Do you remember what the general term is? General term, yeah? Is that the general expression for each um, number? Yeah, very good. So what we would say is, uh, another color. We would say something like this. This thing is equal to, once you write the whole thing out, it's the sum of, now, how many terms will there be in this thing? Okay, what we say is, we start from the zeroth term, you go up to the nth term, right? So for example, a plus b all squared, it's got three terms in it, right? A plus B or Q, there's got four terms in it. So that's why you have a zero term at the beginning, one, two, three, four, six, seven, up to N. So there are N plus one in total. Now, what are the things we're adding up? What are the things we're adding up? I'll give you a clue. There's this guy, and then there's two other pieces after it. Okay, so the first bit is the is the actual coefficient. Okay, and then what? Okay, so you can write this in two ways, okay? You can say, well, let's start in terms of the, the A's. So have that one as, uh, sorry, R. This is whichever rth coefficient this is. And that means how many of the other things will there be in the binomial? It'll be n take away r, right? So for example, the first term, let's, let's call this like say n equals seven, for instance, okay? Your first term will be a to the seven. There are no b's, or rather there are zero b's. And then the next one's gonna be a six b one, a five b two, and these things are always adding up to n, right? Does that make sense? So, we use this, like this statement here, the general term, that's the general term, right there. Okay, that is, like how can you generally say any particular term, that's it. Okay. Now lastly, stepping away from the expansions just a little bit, um, something that we looked at was identities. So we looked at some very simple identities that you could articulate in terms of this thing. Okay, so I'll give you the simplest one. There are three which I hope you can remember off the top of your head. The simplest one goes like this. We can write them all down. Um, n choose zero and n choose n. They're both equal to each other and they're both equal one. Good. So these are like on the ends of Pascal's triangle. Yeah. n choose zero, n choose n. Both of them are equal to one. What's another identity? Does anyone remember any other identities? 
Yeah, right. And choose one. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, sure. All right, we can, we can say that. It wasn't one I had in mind, but it's fine. It does yeah. go ahead and it comes out. Um, the other ones I was thinking of were mainly from like the Pascal's triangle idea. So for instance, we know that Pascal's triangle is symmetrical, right? It has reflectional symmetry. So if you looked at the R coefficient, like counting the one, two, three, four, all the way up to R, it should be the same as if I come from the other side and count R this way, right? So this should be M choose... Okay, so this was the symmetry property. Uh, there was one last one. If I take all of these and, uh, and add them all up on any given row, right? Does anyone remember what happens when you add up all of the numbers in a row of Pascal's triangles? Yeah, very good. Uh, two to the n. <laughs> okay, and there was a wonderful one-line proof for that. I don't know if you remember it. You can um, I can demonstrate it for you again if you like, but it's outside the scope of what I want to do. 